When the patient arrives in the operating room, they have a blood pressure cuff uh, placed on them, cardiograms placed, uh, pulse oximetry and end tidal carbon dioxide level are always done. And in the United States, it's a required monitor to put uh, a temperature probe on the patient or in the patient's mouth or nose. Make sure an intravenous is in place. Give a small dose of a drug such as fentanyl, one to three micrograms per kilogram is what I normally use. The induction drug in a healthy individual who's uh, hemodynamically stable, uh, my preferred drug is propofol. I use two to two and a half milligrams per kilo, and I follow this immediately with rocuronium 0.6 milligrams per kilo, which is a moderate but not large dose of rocuronium. When I'm doing a patient that requires neuromuscular blockade, I often use a uh, nerve stimulator such as the one shown in this picture. It's hooked up to the uh, forearm. Uh, the current is adjusted through the, uh, through the um, uh, stimulator and uh, you examine the thumb for twitches. Uh, as, as uh, stimulations occur. And the usual rate of stimulation is four twitches uh, over two seconds. This is called the train of four. And the assessment of the train of four can give us some indication of how deeply, uh, how deeply paralyzed the patient is, whether it's safe to proceed uh, with uh, intubation, whether it's safe to proceed with surgery, or at the end of the case, whether it's safe to attempt to reverse the patient. I've mentioned bag and mask ventilation a number of times in these lectures, and this is what it looks like. Basically, the bag is, uh, is on the anesthetic circuit. You've seen that in previous pictures. The mask is just a standard uh, medical mask. It's placed over the patient's face to produce a seal around the nose and the mouth. The thumb and forefinger force the mask down over the face. The uh, middle finger and other fingers lift the uh, uh, the chin up, and it's important to pull the chin uh, right up. And you can see that this uh, uh, anesthesiologist is bagging with uh, his or her right hand while positioning the, uh, uh, posi positioning the patient's face and head so that it's easy to ventilate the patient. These are laryngeal mask airways. These devices are meant to sit above the glottis, so not through the end of, not through the cords of the patient, not into the trachea, but above the trachea, and they hold the epiglottis up, uh, and hopefully, if they're perfectly uh, in position, uh, look right down through the cords into the trachea of the patient. The beauty of this device is that even when it's not perfectly positioned, it's often usable. And you can get out of a lot of trouble using this device, even in situations where you're having great difficulty with intubation. This is how it works. The uh, uh, Dr. Brain, who invented this device, recommends the following technique, and I know because he was in my hospital for a number of weeks and taught myself and my colleagues how to use this. Basically, he thinks that you should deflate the cuff of the uh, laryngeal mask, push it down while you're deflating it so it's completely flat, and then take your index finger, put it down right on, under the lip of the cuff, and pass the device into the mouth putting firm pressure on the palate as you proceed into the back of the airway. And it's basically this motion, kind of back and then forward again. And you can push the uh, laryngeal mask right down into the upper airway. And you can see the mask is in place. It's not uh, occluding the airway. It's uh, above the airway. And it's holding the epiglottis out of place. It's very useful. These are standard laryngoscope blades. Uh, the blade on the right is a Macintosh blade. Most of us use the Macintosh blade pretty much routinely. The blades on the left are the Miller blade. Um, I can tell you I haven't used a Miller blade in probably 30 years, but there are some anesthesiologists who swear by it and use it in preference to the Macintosh blade. And you can see the various sizes. They go all the way down to very small uh, for children. And, and in small children, the Miller blade, the straight blade, is often the preferred uh, blade to use. These are endotracheal tubes. These come in various uh, di internal diameters. You can see that there's a cuff at the end of the tube. This is inflated with air once the tube is in place. And this acts as a seal to prevent material passing down uh, through the trachea into the lungs or coming the other way up around the uh, uh, endotracheal tube. And, and it basically seals the airway and allows ventilation to occur. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation.
Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.